I think a lot of people think that it's a very one-dimensional thing. So it's just dirt, but it's a treasure trove. Sediment provides so much information about the whole environment. There's just so much in there. It's more than just dirt. Para poder obtener estos sedimentos, nosotros estamos utilizando puchicor, que son un cilindro de, de plástico que se entierra en el fondo submarino y que se puede obtener una porción del, del sedimento presente en el fondo submarino. Coding in the deep sea is not easy. In this expedition, we have different kind of coatings. The shortest and smallest ones are the push cores. They are done with the ROV. Then we have a multi-coder. Those coders are a bit larger and longer, and they are eight at the same time. And then there is the last called gravity coring. This is the most heavy duty instrument that we have at the moment. Six meters long is more than one ton heavy. Having all these three things is very important because it gives you an image that is the most complete as possible of everything that is happening from the very top of the, of the mat down to several meters below the seafloor. As soon as we recover the core, we split them lengthwise to look what's inside. And it's like unwrapping a Christmas present. You never really know what's inside until you actually unwrap it. So that's definitely one of the best moments and more exciting in a, in a coding expedition. It's always the most exciting when we see changes in grain size, color, um, the biology that lives in it. Pretty interesting. The sound changes. The sound changes. There okay. It well, now it's crunchy. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa! Worms. Here you are. You guys Our came in synthetic worms. worms. <laughs> so, what are animal burrows? I don't know if there are shells inside, definitely. But and on the seafloor, we went through tube worms. What we don't definitely. have here is that upper unit layer like we had in the other cores. The shell oh, layers, like the, yeah, that's right. Like a sharp boundary. Fairly okay. homogenous clay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Very nice. We're extremely pleased when the, the sediment comes up and smells gross, and everyone on the ship flees away from where the ROV is. But yeah, we, we get really excited about that. Yo le digo que es un olor que se asocia al éxito porque nos indica de que aquí encontramos vida en condiciones anóxicas. I don't mind the smell. I don't mind getting dirty. I just don't like when it uh, gets under my fingernails. Getting messy helps us to learn new things and teach people new things. Nuestro trabajo en esta expedición son organismos que viven enterrados y sobre los granos de arena. La gran mayoría de la gente no dimensiona la importancia de estos organismos. Estos organismos cumplen un rol sumamente importante, por ejemplo, la formación de suelo marino, la generación de materia orgánica, el reciclaje de nutrientes. So the sediment is where a lot of the microorganisms that we study live, feeding off of the methane that is coming up from below and the sulfate that's coming down from above. And they're able to then use the sulfate to get rid of the methane from the system. If that methane reaches the atmosphere, it's about 30 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So these organisms are really performing this important service. Es importante para nosotros poder describir estos microorganismos y posteriormente ver algún potencial biotecnológico, como por ejemplo enzimas, proteínas, incluso pigmentos, que puedan tener alguna aplicación en la industria, con el fin de poder reemplazar los catalizadores químicos que son altamente contaminantes por estos biocatalizadores. By diving with ROV, we can see what is happening right now, but the sediment allows us to go back in time. And especially in deep sea sediments, you have this record of the past that is relatively untouched. The most recent seafloor is going to be at the top, but as we go down into the core, so deeper and deeper in the sediment, we go progressively back in time. So up here at the top of the core, we see a very dark, silty, maybe fine sand mud. 
As we go down core, we see a really thick bed of, of bivalve shells. They're kind of jumbled up, which um, can tell us a little bit about the process in which they were placed there. As we move farther down core, we see a contact. Theoretically, this could be earthquake shaking. So in a way, it's the Earth's history being recorded through the deposition of sediment. I think that whenever you can understand the past, it helps you better understand the future. Obtaining the sediments, it's such an extreme, such a crazy environment, and it's often expensive to get there. Um, but I think that once someone realizes how much information you could glean from the sediments, then it's easy to make a decision to study it.